The Google Nest Hub user interface has been the same since the release date. It was not bad, but nothing special about it. And now finally we are getting a new UI design, along with new features, that makes me excited to use the Nest Hub again. So these are four of the most important updates and new features, along with the bad things. First thing to notice is the new card design style. There are five main tabs on the top. Your day information, home control, media, communication and the discover tab. Each tab contains information and control options. Your day will contain weather, your current playing media, calendar events and an easier access to the speakers assigned room control. Also, top news story and household contacts. The home control tab now groups your smart devices by categories. Lights, speakers and TVs, routines and rooms. And this will change depending on the device types you have. From there you can open the card and control your devices or trigger routines and also control the current room light brightness too. Then the media tab will contain your playing media like Netflix or Spotify along with news and podcasts. There is the communication section to make calls to your household numbers or to other rooms and also broadcast messages to other speakers. And finally the discover tab to explore what you can do on the device. This is fun to use and now easier to find what you're looking for, but unfortunately you cannot rearrange and customize cars to your own liking, so you're stuck with this layout, except for dismissing some cards. The second upgrade is dark mode, finally. Now when you navigate to the discover tab, you can set the Nest Hub interface into dark theme, and choose it as always dark, light, or set it to auto. You can also ask Google to turn it on by saying, Turn on dark theme. The third feature is the interpreter mode. So let's say you're speaking with someone but you don't understand each other's languages. The Nest Hub can act as a live interpreter by translating what the first person says, display and speak the text, and also hear your responses and translate them back to the other person. This will be helpful in another reception for example, to have a discussion with the receptionist. To use this, you can just say Be my interpreter. Google will ask you for the second language to be translated, you specify it and start to talk. Here is a quick discussion between me and myself. What language do you want translated? French. Sure, let's get started. Hi, how are you doing? Salut, comment vas-tu? Ça va bien et vous? I'm good, and you? Well, I'm staying home all day and I can't stand it anymore. Eh bien, je reste à la maison toute la journée et je n'en peux plus. Je comprends, c'est de la merde. I understand this is crap. Next is the ultrasound sensing. Well, the sensor was here from the beginning, but this software update figures in new ways to use it. If you head into the Google Home app, your display settings, recognition and sharing, and activate the ultrasound sensing, the Nest Hub will be able to sense your presence around it at about 4 to 6 feet and give you a more convenient experience. For example, if you have a timer on, when you're away from the display, the timer will be displayed in a bigger font so you can see it from across the room. When you come near it, the display will change the style and show touch controls. Another example is when you ask for a commute, the Nest Hub will display maps and detailed information when you're near it and switch to commute time when you go farther away. And finally, let me tell you about the bad stuff. On paper, this is all good. I'm enjoying the new design and new ways of interacting with the display, but there are annoying things like the laggy software. You'd expect a smooth experience from Google, but no, this is a very laggy UI. Moving between windows and opening media feels like on a cheap bad device. The ultrasound sensing feature is good too, but only when it works, because sometimes it will not detect you well. This is a preview software build, so maybe these bugs and performance issues will be fixed in an official release, but I doubt it, especially for the software lag. 
Weirdly enough, Google does not have a good record when it comes to hardware and software experiences combined. But anyway, I'm overall glad with the update. Also, tell me which feature you think is the best upgrade in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, hope this was helpful, smash that like and subscribe buttons if it was, and catch you guys in the next one.